is it that makes you feel safe? A solid core door, or maybe one of those metal exterior doors, right, with a deadbolt or three? A, a safe job? One where as you look at around your workplace, you recognize that you have a skill set or perhaps are able to do things that, that nobody else is able to do. And so because of that, you feel a, a sense of, of security because, well, my job is safe. Maybe it's grades. Right? As, as you, you look at your schooling, the, the, the praise you get from your teachers and, and the the high letter grades that you get on your report card or something that make you feel safe and secure as far as who you are as a a person and in your your intelligence that you have. And so you look at those things and and you feel good and, and secure because of, well, what you're able to do. Perhaps it's It's money. Right? As, as you look at your, your bank account or as you look at your emergency fund or your retirement accounts, you, you look at that and, and you figure out and you, and you say, I'm, I'm comfortable, I'm, I'm safe, I'm secure because I'm able to, to handle emergencies that come up in life. I'm, I'm going to be able to, to pay for things as I get older. And so because of that, there is a sense of, of security and, well, there isn't much worry and anxiety. Perhaps it's your health, right? That as you, you look at your life and you look at how healthy you are and the things that you eat and the exercise that you do, you, you have a sense of, of well-being about yourself because I'm doing everything I can to, to stay healthy. Maybe it's like Marcus, right? Who's got a blanket, sleeps with it every night. Right, because at night, if, if things get dark, if, or all of a sudden there's a thunderstorm or, or something that he's uncertain about, we have that blanket or that doll, right, that we have because it makes us feel secure. That I can hold on to that thing tightly, and I'm not going to worry quite as much about what it is that's scaring me. Perhaps it's your home. Right? The, the, the opportunities it provides, the, the roof that it is over your head, the amenities that you have inside the, the walls of that house are something that make you feel, feel comfortable, and it's a home. My guess is we could probably stay here a good 5, 10, 15 minutes and come up with a, a longer list of all the things that make you feel comfortable. But as you go through that list in your own mind, those things that in your, your own life make you feel comfortable and safe and secure, they're all rather fleeting, aren't they? I mean, you think about every last one of them and how quickly they can just disappear. I mean, your house literally can go up in smoke. Right? Your, your health is, is rather fleeting, isn't it? Because one moment it seems as though you're healthy and the next moment... You're fighting a bug or worse. Blankets, dolls, pillows deteriorate and end up as nothing more than, well, something. Blanket. Right? Job. Even the most secure person in, in, in any sort of job field is going to recognize there's no one who's indispensable. My position could be eliminated just like that and probably no one would blink. The stock market can take a nosedive and suddenly those retirement plans and those retirement accounts and the money I've saved up can disappear in a heartbeat. Right? You, you think of, of all the things in our life that we look at and that bring us that sense, that feeling of security and and comfort. And almost always it's in things that in in an instant can just disappear. And when it happens, then what feeling comes? Anxiety? Worry? 
perhaps a, a lack of, of confidence. You begin to, to doubt yourself. You begin to doubt things that are, are foundational in your life. Right? When those things that we look to for, for comfort and security in life suddenly disappear, what we're left with is, is holding a whole lot of, of nothing. And that gets, to be, that gets to be scary, doesn't it? So where are you and I to turn to? As children of God, for security. Right, that where are you and I to, to look to when it seems as though the things that we look to for comfort and security in life are fleeting? Have you ever thought to yourself why those things are so empty? Why those things don't provide that comfort and security that we ask them to do? The answer is because we're asking them to do something they weren't designed to do. My guess is you've probably tried to tackle some sort of home project at some point in your life, right? Have you ever gotten about halfway through the project, realized you didn't have the right tool, but looked and said, I think I can make this work? Right, where you try to make a hole in the wall and, and maybe you don't go all the way downstairs to get a nail, but instead, well, I've got this screwdriver and it looks kind of small and it's kind of pointy and if I use the hammer, I can, I can hit it in and it'll make a hole. Right, or, or you're trying to drive a nail and you go, I don't want to walk all the way to the garage to get the hammer. Instead, I've got a screwdriver. I'll just use the end of the screwdriver. That's not what those tools were designed to do, right? There's a reason why the military does not mount machine guns on a smart car. Because that's not what it was designed to do. You look at all those things that you and I look to in life to provide comfort and security and those things that we, we try to hold on to, but they were never designed to give us security in life. Take, for example, your job. Why does God give you a job and work? It's a way that God is providing for you, right? It's a way that God continues to provide you, your, your family, with food and a, and a roof over your head and, and a, a multitude of other blessings in your life. He, he never designed your job that you are doing to be a, a source of comfort and security in your life where you're going to be able to hold on to and go, okay, now I'm safe because I have this. Right? G grades are the same way. They certainly are able to help you mark progress, but well, they aren't really designed to, to give you something that you can hold on to and say, okay, I'm, I'm okay because I managed to get an A. Money is never, was never designed to, to be something to give you comfort and security in this life. It too is one of those blessings that God gives us and that we can rejoice and be thankful over. But it's just simply a tool God uses to provide for our needs. You look at every last one of those things that you and I might look to to find comfort and security and when we ask it to do more, it's going to fail. Because that's not what God designed them to do. So where do we find that security? Listen to Jesus' words that, he, uh, that were recorded for us in Luke. And as you hear Jesus' words here, and you hear Jesus say, don't worry. Don't think of, I believe it was in the 90s, right? Where the, the guy's saying, don't worry, be happy. That's not what Jesus is saying. Just don't worry and just be happy and everything will turn out. But as Jesus tells you not to worry, listen for the reason why, as children of God, we don't need to worry. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the lilies grow. 
They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about, do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after all such things, and your Father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Did you, did you pick up why you as a child of God don't need to worry? Because you're precious to God. Right? He, he uses this, this tiny little example. He says, think of the birds. Think of the ravens. They don't have barns. They don't have storerooms. They don't plant seeds. And yet, what does God do for them? Feeds them. Each and every day. And you are so much more valuable than a simple raven. God looks at you and he sees a, a child that he loves, a, a child that he was willing to die for. And if he's willing and he does that for birds, how much more will he take care of you? Right? Or he uses the picture of a lily, right? A lily growing in a field and how he clothes that lily with, with beauty. And he says, you are, are so much more important to God than a wildflower growing in some pasture. You are precious to him. And because of that, He's going to take care of you. Jesus' parables, right, those, those examples, they take something small, right, and they say, because this is true on a small scale, think of what it means for you because of how much he, he loves you. You're precious to him. So precious that he was willing to show you exactly how much you, you meant to him. I suppose you, you look at the world today and how do we ascribe value? How much someone's willing to pay for it, right? A diamond is only valuable because people are willing to pay thousands of dollars for them. Right? You, you look on eBay, why do some things cost thousands of dollars that you look at and say, I had that growing up and I trashed it. Because now suddenly people want it and are willing to pay Hundreds and thousands of dollars for something. Something is valuable because someone is willing to pay money for it. You are valuable. Look at how much God was willing to pay for you. Right? He, he looked at you and he saw you ascribing things and, and, and taking things in this life and making, trying to make them do something they weren't designed to do. And as a result, he sees people whose lives are filled with worry and anxiety and uncertainty. Right? And instead of writing them off and saying, you should find your value in, in, what I, in who I am and what I've done for you, he comes to us and he looks at us and says, you're so valuable to me, I'm willing to come down from heaven and die for you. We see God himself shedding his own blood so that he can make you his child. Value, especially as we look at it, is how much is a person willing to pay for something? How much was God willing to pay for you? He was willing to pay himself. He offered himself as the price that would pay so that he could make you his child. And as he pays that price, he looks at you and he assures you now that your sin is forgiven. Those times where you've tried to make something, one of the blessings God has given you in life, do more than it was designed to do. His blood pays for that. For all the worry and anxiety and uncertainty in your life that, that come because you've asked something that God has given you to do something it wasn't designed to do and as a result, you have all these other things in life that, that bring heartache and worry and anxiety and uncertainty. God comes to you and he, he forgives you. 
But he doesn't stop there, does he? He doesn't just show you his value, show you how valuable you are to him. But he says, because you are valuable to me, because you are precious, don't worry about all those things in life. Note that God doesn't say we should suddenly all become fatalistic. In that we just hope every morning food is going to show up at our front door. But he says, don't set your hearts on those things. Don't ask them to do things I didn't design them to do. Right? When it comes to your job, work hard. God, through that job, is going to bless you and your family, and he's going to provide for you. Right? At school, work hard, but don't find your value in the grade you get. Instead, use your gifts to the very best God has given to you. And through that, God will take care of you and bless you. And when those uncertainties in life come up, when suddenly our health disappears, when blessings are taken from us, when, when things we value and love and, and, and hold on to suddenly disappear, we won't be left holding nothing, will we? But we'll have our God. A God who reminds us each and every day of how precious and valuable we are. And, and, and when we have that, we begin to look at everything else differently, don't we? I mean, Jesus describes it in those last verses of, of the text, doesn't he? He says when you, you stop looking at, say, for example, money, to provide this comfort and security in your life that says, when I have this, I will be okay, the child of God is able to say, I can sell everything. I can have so few possessions on this earth, someone might think I am poor, and yet, I have everything. Because my heavenly Father has given me his kingdom. Another way Jesus describes it? Seeking first his kingdom, huh? Seeking first in our life that relationship that we have with our Savior. Making him the priority in our life. And as we seek him in his kingdom, guess what happens to all those other things that come up in life? The worries begin to dissipate. The anxieties begin to melt away. The uncertainties begin to disappear. Not because we have some view of life where we go, I can just not worry and just be happy and things will hopefully just all take care of themselves. No, they begin to go away because as I grow in my relationship with my Heavenly Father, I hear those promises He's given to me and I have confidence that He's going to keep those promises that as things take a, a downhill slide from my perspective in life i have a god who promises that he'll always be with me that he'll never leave me or forsake me when the when the devil comes and knocks on my door with any number of temptations or guilt over things that i've done in my life i have an answer i'm a forgiven child of god it means that you and i now can go to bed at night and rest easy and secure. Because my confidence and my security in life isn't found in something here. I'm not asking it to, those things to do something they were never designed to do. Instead, I have a God who sees me as his own precious and dearly loved child. A God who promises to take care of every last one of my needs a God who is almighty and can do every last one of those things I need in order to, for him to take care of me. And because of that, I rest secure. Amen. And the peace of God, which goes beyond our understanding, will guard and will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our Savior Lutheran Church is located on the south side of Birmingham off Highway 280. We are on Dunnett Valley Road, about three quarters of a mile east of Treetop Family Adventure and Sports Blast. Our Sunday services begin at 1015 with Sunday School and Bible Class at 9 o'clock. We welcome visitors and hope to see you soon.
For more information, please visit our website at OurSaviorBirmingham.com. Click on Sermons at the top of the page for a copy of today's service folder. You can also find us online on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.